Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, today I wanted to have a little discussion with you guys uh, about my greatest fear of living on uh, solar energy and supplying your own power. And I've been talking with you guys, answering comments this morning. And by the way, it's Saturday morning. I hope you're all having a good weekend. Um, <clears throat> And the greatest fear I have is lightning. Uh, and I've had a lot of lightning uh, in my experience living off grid. And I'm just sitting here reading the from the National Weather Service, how powerful is lightning? And it says a typical lightning flash is about 300 million volts and about 30,000 amps in comparison to your household current, which is 120 volts and 15 amps. So, <clears throat> it's a lot of power. Now, when I was first living off-grid up in the Colorado mountains, like I've uh, shared with a lot of you guys, uh, I took a lot of lightning hits up there. For the majority of my time living there, I was uh, on an ungrounded system, and I talked back and forth with my solar provider back then about the pros and cons of whether I should be grounded or ungrounded. <clears throat> And there was some controversy on which was best there. Uh, some people, you know, suggested let's put a lightning rod in. Uh, I was surrounded by lightning rods with all of the trees around my cabin. And they were all mostly striped from top to bottom from lightning strikes they had taken over the years. And I took a lot of direct hits and uh, around me. And I actually took a direct hit <clears throat> on my cabin. And I don't know exactly the path it took. I noticed that the big tree at the back of the cabin after that direct hit on the cabin was striped. And I believe it went from that tree to a hot water heater vent that was coming out of the wall. And it blew a hole through my cabin wall about the size of my fist, just about that big. Blew a hole through uh, T111 on the outside and inside and, and uh, grounded on a wood stove that I was sitting about three feet away from. And it looked like the wood stove had been welded with a big old welding mark where that lightning had actually grounded on the wood stove. <clears throat> I saw the lightning storm coming. Uh, it, it was just dancing, coming up the hill in just unstoppable lightning bolts. So I anticipated I was going to get hit. I was nervous. I went and disconnected everything. Um, and when that happened, uh, it was so loud of an explosion. It, it, it affected my hearing for days. Um, it was terrifying. That system was grounded. And my L16 batteries, I was running six L16 batteries. They didn't stop making noise for about a week. Completely disconnected. A lot of the stuff that was completely disconnected from the EMP was fried. Charge controller fried. Uh, TVs that were completely unplugged from everything fried radios fried and that was a direct hit so like i said i had been running ungrounded for many many years then i got convinced to go ahead and and ground the system so that system was grounded um and before i had taken a lot of nearby hits uh, i never really suffered any <clears throat> uh, direct damage i still always unplugged everything possible as I knew lightning was in the area. Uh, I've been knocked off ladders from nearby uh, lightning strikes. I've been knocked to the ground three or four times in my life by lightning. Uh, I've lived in lightning prone areas. I mean that area up in the mountains was at about 8,300 feet and it was just a magnet for lightning. Um, so I have a real healthy respect for lightning. Uh, and out here, 
the same thing. I have been taking a direct hit on this place right here. Uh, it, I believe it first struck my metal Connex container and, and then went down to the ground to lava. This Everything behind me is lava ground. You can't take a pick and, and go into this uh, lava at all. Uh, just solid lava, you know, about maybe this much soil on top of the ground behind me. <clears throat> when I took the direct hit here, like I said, it came down. I believe it hit the corner of my container, which is just behind me here. Went down into the ground, blew a trench through the lava about that deep and went over and hit a metal leg on a car port that I had, and that's where it stopped. But it blew a trench 60 feet through the lava, and a foot deep. I was sitting on my bed, scared to death, and it sounded like a million BBs hit the roof, and I knew I'd been hit. And again, I had unplugged everything uh, possible and I suffered a lot of damage that way, too. There was a lot of things that were fried, that were not plugged in, not connected to anything. I was happy to be alive. And <clears throat> uh, I just couldn't believe it. Anyway, that sound of the BBs, it was the lava rock that was pulverized from solid lava in the trench that was made by the lightning traveling through the ground, through just millions of little specks of lava up onto the roof. So, yeah, I've had a, I've had a lot of uh, lightning experience. And when that one hit me in the mountains, I was insured. I called my insurance agent. He came out. He looked at everything, and, and he said, well, I think that the insurance company is lucky they're not paying for your funeral. And... He had just been to another town, uh, maybe 50, 60 miles away from where I live, on a regular residential house hooked to the grid that took a hit, uh, direct hit, and it killed all four people inside the house. And that was a well-grounded house on the grid, took a, you know, a direct hit <clears throat> and killed everybody. I had, what, up to 300 million volts in my living room in the in the house within feet of me and how it grounded on that wood stove I'll never fully understand but that's where it did ground and <clears throat> within feet of it and and I lived here I was again within feet of that lightning hit, hitting and uh, and I survived that so that's my biggest fear and I mean I don't know uh, what the answer is on that uh, and I've lived both ungrounded and grounded. Uh, and as far as equipment surviving on a direct hit, I've noticed no difference. Although I will say ungrounded, I survived with most of my components surviving better than with a grounded system. But I really don't know the answer. So I was having a discussion, just a brief discussion with someone online earlier this morning about that and about what to do. So I wanted to encourage a conversation around that. What do some of you guys do in some of the areas that you live uh, about the grounding or ungrounding? Uh, because we all know people that do one or the other. And, you know, like out here and in the mountains the same way, the more rural you get, you know, affordability for, for doing things really comes into play for a lot of people. They're trying to get their power up and running like I did in the mountains. When I first started, I was never thinking about grounding. I had a solar panel, a battery, and I was just happy to watch a small little uh, TV and VCR to watch a movie now and then. <clears throat> had lots of discussions with people that really knew their stuff up there. And there was, you know, a little debate about which way you should really go. The end result was, uh, and it was, from the insurance agent too, who he ran around, you know, to all these claims that were made on lightning damage uh, about the difference too. And he said, simply lightning goes wherever it wants to. 
So I was never keen on putting a lightning rod on my home because I did not want to attract lightning in any kind of a way. I was always close enough as it was. So I just started thinking this would be a good conversation to have and see what everybody says about that because, yeah, I've lived on both and I've suffered uh, the worst damage being grounded as opposed to being ungrounded. So... Yeah, I'd just love to hear what you guys have to say about this. There's a couple other things I wanted to say about that, and they're eluding me at the moment. <laughs> Forgetful of this older age. I'll see if I can remember here that here in a minute. I made a couple of notes. Okay, I found what I was going to talk about. But anyway, here's another little thing I'm looking at online, and it says another, you know, there's a question, is all lightning the same voltage? You know, I gave you that one from the National Weather Service, about 300 million volts in a bolt of lightning, 30,000 amps. And then this one says uh, lightning bolts range from 5,000 amps to 200,000 amps. And voltages vary from 40,000 volts to 120,000 volts. So yeah, that's a lot of energy, regardless of what source you're going to cite. Uh, and you don't want that anywhere near you. And you know, these uh, little lightning protection uh, devices that we can all put onto our systems and stuff now. You know, if you take a direct hit, and some of you I'd like to know, if you've taken a direct hit and had some of that, what kind of damage did you take? Because uh, this is an important uh, subject. Uh, the weather's crazy uh, wherever you live, but lightning, absolutely my greatest fear uh, of whether I had solar power or not, it's my greatest fear. Uh, even when I did not have any solar power and I was not living, uh, using any power whatsoever, lived off the grid with no power, read books for my entertainment. Those were the olden days, right? Um, yeah, I still think a lot about it. And when I hear it off in the distance, I get nervous. I always do. Uh, I always figure it's coming for me. Uh, even my good friends, uh, when we used to do a lot of golfing on the golf courses, uh, if we saw, if they saw a nearby strike, they knew I was getting nervous and they got nervous for being around me because of my experience around lightning. So yeah, I really, really want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Uh, a lot of you are running ungrounded systems. A lot of you are running grounded systems. What's been your experience around lightning? Because I've got a lot of experience. Like I said, I've been blown off my feet more times than I can count. Uh, and have a healthy respect for it. So anyway, let's discuss. <laughs> all right. Hope you're all safe where you are. Having a great weekend. Catch you on the next one. Aloha. Makes me nervous even just talking about that stuff.